بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم ویلکم ٹو انگلش فور فائیو فور کرٹیسزم وی ہیو ٹو اسٹارٹ سیمیل جانسن ٹوڈے لاسٹ لیکچر وی ہیڈ واز اباؤٹ ایرسٹاٹل پوائٹکس لیٹ سم اٹ اپ اے لٹل سو دیٹ یو ہیو این آئیڈیا واٹ وی ہیو ڈن پریویسلی سو ایرسٹاٹل واز دا اسٹوڈنٹ آف پلیٹو اینڈ ہی لیوڈ ان ایفنس اینڈ ہی فارم ان اکیڈمی دیر اینڈ ان دیٹ اکیڈمی ہی کنٹینیوڈ فار اے ویری لانگ پیریڈ آف ٹائم دا اکیڈمی دا لائسیم دیٹس کالڈ اٹ کنٹینیوڈ فار اے ویری لانگ پیریڈ آف ٹائم اینڈ ٹل ہی واز کلوز بائی ایمپر جسٹین ٹھیک ہے سو ایرسٹاٹل کی پوائٹکس پہ بیسکلی فوکس اس کا تھا ٹریجڈی پہ کہ وٹ ٹریجڈی از ہی ڈیفائن ٹریجڈی فار آس ہی گیو اس دا کمپوننٹس آف ٹریجڈی ہی ٹولڈ آس کہ اے گڈ ٹریجڈی ووڈ بی ہیونگ پائتھ تھاس اٹ ووڈ ہیو گڈ پلاٹ اٹ ووڈ ہیو گڈ کیریکٹر تھاٹ اٹ ووڈ ہیو یونٹی آف ٹائم ان پلیس اٹ ووڈ ہیو یونٹی آف ایکشن اینڈ دا ایکشن ووڈ موو ان پروبیبل اینڈ نیسری سیکوینس آف ایونٹس اینڈ ایز اے ریزلٹ آف دیٹ ایونٹس دیر ہیز ٹو بی اے کلائمیکس اچیوڈ ایز اے ریزلٹ آف دیٹ کلائمک دیٹ پوائنٹ آف کلائمیکس دیر ووڈ بی اے پروسیس آف اینڈ اینڈ پیریپیشیا اینڈ ایز اے ریزلٹ آف دیز ٹو پروسیسز دیر از گوئنگ ٹو بی اے ڈاؤن فال دا ڈاؤن فال از جنرلی کازڈ اور فار دا سیک آف اٹ فار دا سیک آف موسٹ افیکٹ از کازڈ بائی دا ٹریجک فلو آف دا پروٹیگنسٹ اور دا مین کیریکٹر آف دا پلے اور دا ٹریجڈی and the tragic flaw could be uh, something that the character has done something that he has not done something that he has uh, done knowingly something that he has not has done unknowingly something that was a part of fate and as a result of the tragic flaw uski zindagi hero se zero aur zero se hero ban jati hai theek hai there is a complete reversal of fortune which is called peripatia and the reversal of fortune is caused because of um, uh, anagnosis because moving from ignorance to knowledge and all this uh, continues and he explains each and every part of it he explained what should a good plot look like whether it should be simple whether it should be complex if it's complex what kind of a complex plot it should be if it's um, a simple plot in a simple plot it should not be so ke ek hi time pe kisi ke sath acha ho raha hai aur kisi ke sath bura ho raha hai it would be the worst kind of plot according to aristotle so he told you that in order to uh, in order for the poetry or the tragedy to be great it should follow all these components to uske baad end pe usne aapke sath discussion ki thi ke kisi bhi achhi form of tragedy ki aur epic poetry ka apas mein koi khas comparison nahi aap kar sakte because they're good in their own respect um there was a famous argument in the time of aristotle where they said ke epic poetry is far more superior than the tragedy and the reason for saying that was ke epic poetry is uh, addressing a finer uh, audience it's it's addressing to a confined group of people who have a little more taste than the people who uh, enjoy tragedy people who enjoy tragedy are the people who are generally masses they uh, for the sake of for the sake of pleasing them the actors on the stage they uh, they create melodrama and they overact and uh, it also says um, this argument says that epic poetry does not need these gestures it does not need body movements uh, it can be understood without these things uh, whereas a tragedy it would require all these body movements and gestures so these things were said in favor of high, uh, epic poetry considering it to be the higher art form however um aristotle defended a uh, tragedy and he said that if there is melodrama and if there is um overacting it's not the fault of the drama it's not the fault of the poet either it's the fault of the performance if it's not been done properly so it's the fault of the performance basically you can't blame tragedy for that then he says that the tragedy can be read just like epic poetry can be read so when it's read like that it's equally uh, equally potent it's equally powerful he says the gestures are not something that are useless uh, they can be used uh, you know in a in a good way to enhance the meaning of the poem so if it's done like that it would be more beneficial towards um, both epic poetry and tragedy uh, so he says ke zaruri nahi hai ke ek tragedy ko bhi perform hi kiya jaye tragedy ko bhi epic poetry ki tarah padha ja sakta hai and it would be uh, equally uh, entertaining and equally powerful theek hai ji and he uh, went on to praise tragedy and he went on to say that tragedy is the higher art form why because he believed ke epic poetry jo hai uske سارے ایلیمنٹس ٹریجڈی میں ہوتے ہیں لیکن ٹریجڈی کے اندر سارے ایلیمنٹس ایپک پوئٹری والے نہیں ہوتے ٹھیک ہے اور ہی وینٹ آن ٹو سے کہ یعنی کہ جو ٹریجڈی ہے اس میں چونکہ میلوڈی بھی ہوگی اسپیکٹیکل بھی ہوگی ایپک پوئٹری میں یہ سب کچھ نہیں ہوتا سو ہی موڈ آن اینڈ دا کنکلوڈنگ ریمارکس ووڈ بی دیٹ ایپک پوئٹری از ناٹ ایز گڈ ایز ٹریجڈی از بیکاز ایپک پوئٹری جو ہے 
it can never be uh, it, it covers a long period of time it is so it it's, it loses the effect it should have on the reader however the tragedy it focuses on one period of time uh, in a in a, a protagonist's life so it's more compact and it has a little more effect so it was all about um, aristotle and about poetics what we have to start today is samuel johnson uh, Samuel Johnson was a, a British writer and he's basically famous, uh, known as Dr. Johnson, famously. Okay? And uh, he's famous for uh, writing this, uh, compiling this first English dictionary. He's often referred to as Dr. Johnson and he was an English writer who has made uh, lasting contributions to English literature as a poet, as an essayist, as a lexicographer, as a literary critic, as a biographer, editor. These are different things that he has done. Um, he's a versatile person because, you know, he when he discusses, um, uh, because he's one of the first people who started this trend of biographies. He uh, biographies ke trend ko change bhi kar diya tha because initially kya hota tha ki jab biography likhi jati thi to usko uh, morality ke aspects se dekhte the. Koshish karte the ki uh, us aadmi ki jiski biography likhi jari, jiski story of life likhi jari hai, uski achhi qualities hi siraf batai jai. What Dr. Johnson did, he, he changed it a little. He's, he can be considered one of the pioneers of the real biography that's written nowadays. He said that the lives of people should be written, should be copied down as they were. And he said that oh, the lives of the people who were important are not the only lives that are worth recording. The lives of the common people are equally important. So that is why when he wrote this book, which we are going to read, from which we are going to read a little, these people, they when he when he wrote about the poets of England, he not only focused on the great names, but he also focused on some of the names that were not very much well known. Uh, he selected them on the basis of merit, and then he continued uh, writing about them. So he's also famous uh, as a literary critic. When we read the eminent poets of the English literature, so you'll see that he is such a good critic. He's so sound in his knowledge that he does not write a single word that he does not mean. He, he is not, you know, awed by the great names. If he wants to praise a, a poet, he's not going to praise him just because he's, you know, considered good. He would, you know, would not look at a person from a distance and see the towering figure. Uske paas chaake, uske contemporary ban ke soche ga ke, haan ji, isne is era mein likha tha, I'm going to stand with him and I'm going to assess him on this basis, ke if he was living in this period of time, he has written this, is it good enough? If, dekho, jab, लोग मर जाते हैं तो उसके बाद तो जनरली उनको जो उनका डिजर्विंग प्रेज होता है या उससे भी कई दफा ज्यादा मिल जाता है जो असल अकॉर्डिंग टू जॉनसन द रियल पोएट वुड बी रिकॉग्नाइज्ड इन हिज टाइम नॉट नेसेसरीली लेकिन दिस इज व्हाट ही थिंक्स दैट आई वुड ऑब्जर्व हिम एज अ कंटेम्पररी as I would not be awed and, you know, shocked and, you know, in awe of the person uh, who has been a great towering figure of literature just because people have told me to, that he is so. So he is going to discuss Milton, he is going to discuss Shakespeare and you should read the things that he say about them. He is not going to be very much, you know, uh, he's not going to be full of praises for both of them and he's going to criticize them very very harshly that sometimes you you sit back and think that ki ye kya keh diya isne, isne Milton ke baare mein ye keh diya, isne Shakespeare ke baare mein ye keh diya but he has evidence to prove everything that he says you have to keep that in mind that in literary criticism your opinion is as valid as the proof that you provide if you can prove what you have to say that goes on in life as well that holds true for life as well Whatever you say, you should have literary proof for it, textual proof for it. And this is what Samuel Johnson is going to discuss every poem written by Milton. Not every, I mean the important poems written by Milton, which he's famous for. And he's going to make sure that he tells you why he thinks so. And by the time you're finished with whatever he has written, you will be also questioning the talent of Milton. So, जो आज तक आपने जब history of literature पढ़ी है, जब आपने paradise lost पढ़ी है, आपने मिलने की दूसरी poems पढ़ी है, honest blindness पढ़ी है, बाकी सब कुछ, तो आप कितने हवा हवा हवा, आप जो book खोलते हैं उसमें लिखा था Milton कितना अच्छा poet है, he is the best ever, he is has such control over language, his diction is so good, his language is so precise, he has never written a word, because I've read these words written for Milton, that he has never written a word that is unnecessary, superfluous, his language is so precise, everything fits in so perfectly. He, he makes an outline and then he fills it up and it's done so 
in such an organized way and in such a beautiful way. But when you read Samuel Johnson and the criticism that he has for Milton, you automatically start questioning whatever you already knew. So this what Samuel this is what he's going to do. He's going to make you think. The job of literary critic it is the job of literary critic. It's going to tell you what to think and he's going to help you to think uh, what he thinks is the right thing. Okay? Achha. He was an Anglican and a Tory. So, अगर आपकी थोड़ी सी familiarity हो English history के साथ, history of England के साथ, तो ये वो लोग थे जो Anglican थे, basically Anglican Church के साथ. Edward the Eighth ने, sorry, Henry the Eighth ने, when he wanted to marry again, he broke off from the Church of Rome and he made the Church of England. So, people they automatically जिस church में उनका king होगा, वो उसी church को follow करेंगे ना? So all of them they turned Anglican. So they he was an Anglican, a a devout Anglican at that matter, जैसे devout Catholics होते हैं ना, he was a devout Anglican. Church of England में believe करता था, and he was a Tory. Tory is a political party, ठीक है? Tory and Whigs. अच्छा, he was born in Lichfield in Birmingham in England, and he attended Pembroke College, Oxford. So um, when he was studying in his college, what happened that he, uh, his father died and because his father died, so there was no money available and because there was no money available, he had to come back. Ek saal mera khalas ne college mein padha tha and his study had to cut off. So when his study cut off, he went back to where he lived in Litchfield and he went into depression. And this depression just continued because, you know, there were no antidepressant medicines at that time. There was no anti-anxiety. And life was very tough in the England at that time because it's, they were not these developed countries that we know of nowadays. They were very harsh places to live in. The climate was harsh. The medical science was not that advanced. People could not be helped. with similar were very small diseases that people died and they were living in their lives. So he suffered from depression throughout his life. Um, he was not very, you know, good-looking man as well. He was tall, he was stout, his face was, he had a big face and it was, you know, covered with marks of this, poka marks hote, chichak ke daak jisko aap kehatne. So, he was a very ugly persona basically, not very good to look at and he was bitter as well. So, he reached an age and he got married to Mrs. Porter and Mrs. Porter was 20 years his senior, so she was a widow at that time when he got married to her and uh, they went to a place and opened a school there but he was not a very you know likable person Samuel Johnson wasn't he was not very light and he was not very jolly and you know he could not talk to people very nicely he lacked social graces so the school didn't uh, fare much well and so they had to put an end to it uh, he started this project of dictionary he worked on it for almost eight years and uh, he was one of the first, this was the dictionary that he compiled was one of the first and it published in 1775. And after his dictionary was published for the next 150 years, the only dictionary that existed in English language was his dictionary. So this is his most important work. The next important work that we have to consider is what he wrote as, um, uh, uh, as a literary critic about the eminent poets of the English literature. So I have told you that we have this book, Essays, Eminent Poets of the English Literature. We are going to study Milton and we are going to study Cowley. Milton, of course, you know, it's from the Stuart Caroline age. And this age, people who are generally Puritans, if you remember, there was a king, James I and Charles I, and they were very, not very good kings. And there was a lot of unrest during their time. And as a result of that unrest, people, they stood up and they threw him all out of the country. He was banished and he had to went to France. He had to go to France. So as a result of no king, there was a parliament, Commonwealth formed. Oliver Cromwell was the head of that uh, Commonwealth. And they are known as Puritans. And the Puritans were the people uh, who brought about the Renaissance of soul. Okay, Renaissance ka period tha na, jo original Renaissance thi, iska period thi, was the rebirth of knowledge. So, as a result of that rebirth of knowledge, insaan ne apne aapko bhoat zada important samaj liya tha. Or chunki wo apne aapko bhoat zada important samaj ne lagge thi, to everything around them was all about them. So, Renaissance had a, has a, had a, a bad effect on the morality of man. So, when these Puritans, Oliver Cromwell, they came into uh, power, there was a Renaissance of soul. Insaan ki morality ke upar, ki rebirth hui thi. 
they focus that man has to you know has to consider himself answerable uh, for uh, for a few things so the soul was reborn at this period of time so the puritans they were a little considered to be really the hardliners jaise hamare taliban hai ye jo jinko aap kehte hain ki fundamentalists um this is the uh, um, this is the what you call um, the, the impression that they have given and this is the repetition that they've earned actually they were very nice people initially so uh, these people they they talked of the rights of men or the civil rights of men civil liberties ki baat karte the kyunki they were against the monarchy king kings ke queens ke khilaf the because unke khayal mein jo kings or queens the they they usurp your rights to live as they sh- as you should live so they were good people uh, milton was one of the puritans aur uski poetry is all about you know preaching uski poetry mein morality hai theek hai just say and he is from that school of thought who believes that the art should be for the sake of morality so uh, samuel johnson when he discussed milton he is going to uh, question that morality as well he thinks ke is morality ko bahut zyada drag kiya gaya hai kham kha khanch khanch ke poems ke andar dala gaya hai to isko padhne ka tarika ye hai ki you have to have a knowledge of uh, the text of the poems so there are four five poems we are going to discuss from milton i'm going to give you a summary of these poems you know a general story mein aapko zarur bata dungi ke uh, ye har poem jo hai ye kis bare mein thi isme kya ho raha tha but as you see that these poems are very very long poems based on you know a few hundred pages so you can't do it line by line but uh, if you know the general story of the poem it would be easy for you to understand what milton uh, what um, samuel johnson has to say about milton so let's start it and we'll go line by line word by word and try to discuss what milton what samuel johnson has to say about milton i hope you know john milton is known as john milton He is one of the poets on whom much praise is bestowed, and his one such poem is Lycidas. Lycidas is one of the most famous poems, and Lycidas is a Greek anthology. Ski ab etymology pe chahiye is word ki to ye Greeks ke liye use hota hai. Generally, ye word Lycidas use hota hai whenever you have to, you know, you you write elegy ke liye use hota hai. Elegy is something that that's sort of a mourning poem. You you've lost a loved one and you have mourned. uh for them you write a poem in which you mourn the loss okay the poem is written for king edward uh, when he dies uh, uh milton ye likhi thi and it's a pastoral allegory allegory hoti hai when you're not writing something in the uh, straight forward way aapne koi na koi koi ek image aur draw kar liya uska parallel ek aur draw kar lete hain so he's uh, the poem is about a shepherd uh, and his friend and his friend has died and because his friend has died Uh, so he's asking the gods that why has this happened he was such a nice man we used to you know go out on the fields and we used to um you know uh, take care of our sheep and suddenly he's drowned and we were we were we was everyone we were the gods when this happened so he asked the gods and the gods they come one by one their spirits coming and the spirits are you know talking about each talking to each other ki haan ji lycidas he died how did he die how did he drown why didn't anyone do anything so there was no answer uh, no one has any answer for this so th- basically it's a pastoral allegory and this is written as an elegy to mourn the death of king edward who was the king at that time theek hai acha ab isme jo criticism hua hai na lycidas pe wo kya hai पहली चीज़ बहुत स्ट्रेट फॉरवर्ड ब्रूटल क्रिटिसिज्म है कि डिक्शन इज हार्ड द राइम्स आर अनसर्टन एंड द नंबर्स आर प्लीजिंग अनप्लीजिंग सॉरी सो डिक्शन इज हार्ड सख्त जबान है इट्स नॉट सॉफ्ट इट्स नॉट गुड टू हेयर इट्स नॉट गुड टू लिसन टू राइम्स आर अनसर्टन कुछ जगह पे एक ए और बी जा रही है फिर बी और सी आ रही है फिर ए और सी आ जाएगी राइम्स जो अनसर्टन है प्रॉपर काफ़ी और अदीफ जो है वर्ड्स का आपसे मिल नहीं रहा इफ देर इन द फॉर्म ऑफ कपलेट्स दे डोंट मैच द एंड्स राइम्स की होती है ना जो एंड पे वर्ड होता है जिसको मैच करना चाहिए बाकी वर्ड्स के साथ इट्स नॉट गोइंग लाइक दिस इट्स अनसर्टन एंड द नंबर्स आर अनप्लीजिंग मीटर द लाइन्स आर नॉट इन अ प्रॉपर मीटर या एम्बिक पेंटर मीटर है हेग्जा मीटर है वी डू नॉट नो हाउ इट गोज इट जस्ट मूव्स ऑन इन एन अनसर्टन वे सो द फर्स्ट थिंग इज द डिक्शन इज हार्ड the language that he has used is not as soft as it should be in the case of an allergy and the rhymes they are uncertain and the meter it's irregular its beauty is any is 
in the images and sentiments. Agar koi beauty hai, now this is a very hard thing to say that he has said here. He says, ki if there is any beauty here, it's in the form of images or sentiments. Masla kya ho jata yaan pe? Ki usne if ka lafz use kar liya yaan pe. If there is any beauty, because he does not seem to see any beauty here. So if you want to see any beauty, the beauty can be found in the pastoral imagery that he has created. Pastoral imagery kya hai? Achha khubsurat green pasture hai, jis mein bheerein jo hain, wo ghaas khaari hain. Asman khubsurat hai, pahar hain, mausam achha hai. Okay, fine. This is the beauty that is there. Or in the sentiments. Okay, so he's feeling sorry for someone who has died. All right, let's give him the edge for that. So Samuel Johnson is being very, very harsh. The first two lines he has to say about Milton, they are they're extremely harsh when he is completely criticizing him for something that Milton is very famous for. That is his diction and his you know perfect rhyme scheme. Milton used to write uh, in blank verse. If you remember, Paradise Lost, puri ke puri blank verse mein hai. लेकिन अगर उसने ब्लैंक वर्स यहाँ पे यूज नहीं भी की तो भी जो भी वर्स यूज की है वो इनकंसिस्टेंट है उसकी राइम स्कीम इनकंसिस्टेंट है उसके जो नंबर्स हैं यानी कि उसकी जो मीटर है वो इनकंसिस्टेंट है और ब्यूटी देर इज नो ब्यूटी इन लैंग्वेज बिकॉज एज यू ऑलरेडी सैड की डिक्शन अच्छी नहीं है उसने ये भी बता दिया है कि बाकी चीजें भी उसकी खास इतनी इंप्रेसिव नहीं है तो ब्यूटी तो है ही नहीं लैंग्वेज की ब्यूटी तो है ही नहीं इफ यू फाइंडिंग इफ यू ट्राइंग टू लुक वेरी हार्ड फॉर एनी सॉर्ट ऑफ ब्यूटी द ब्यूटी वुड बी द इमेज दैट द लैंग्वेज हैज क्रिएटेड सो अगर उसने जो सीन क्रिएट किया है जो भी टाइम शाम का सुबह का क्रिएट किया है इमेज जो स्पिरिट्स इनकलकेट किया है उसके अंदर यह जो डेटीज दिखाए हैं ये जो झाड़ियाँ हैं बुशेज हैं there any berries if there are any flowers if there is a man sitting under a tree looking sad if that's a good scene that's the only beauty in the scene uh, that's the, and the sentiments of course the sentiments that that are there he's feeling sorry for the friend that who has died he's feeling sorry for the king who has died he's falling he's feeling sorry for the shepherd who was his friend who used to tend the sheep with him who has died who's drowned in the sea and he's feeling sorry for it and this the feeling of sadness and the feeling of sorry is is uh, is the only beautiful thing in this poem acha so there is a complete lack of passion as far as um Samuel Johnson is concerned here he says there's no passion in lycidas why why would he say that passion runs away from illusions and obscure opinions acha उसकी लैंग्वेज को ही फर्दर क्रिटिसाइज कर रहा है वो कह रहा है कि इसने बहुत ज़्यादा अलूजन यूज़ किए अलूजन क्या होते हैं रेफरेंसेस, टॉकिंग अबाउट थिंग्स नॉट इन अ स्ट्रेट वर्ड आपने किसी चीज़ का जिक्र करना है तो आप किसी पुराने ज़माने की माइथोलॉजी से कोई एक चीज़ ला के उसकी एग्जाम्पल देते हैं उसकी तरफ रेफर कर देंगे कि ये तो ऐसे था ठीक है जैसे आप कह दें कि तख्त जमशेद जैसे तख्त जमशेद वो सड़क ऐसे वो सोफा ऐसा था जैसे तख्त जमशेद जैसे जाम जम जमशेद इस तरह की बातें अगर आप कर दें तो इट मीन्स कि आपने अलूज यू हैव अलूडेड टू समथिंग दैट यू न्यू ऑलरेडी एंड द रेफरेंस माइट नॉट बी दैट यू नो कॉमन प्लेस पीपल माइट नॉट अंडरस्टैंड इट सो ही सेज कि इफ देर इज पैशन पैशन इज यू नो द रॉ इमोशन द ट्रू फीलिंग दैट यू हैड फॉर सम वन ही सेज दैट इफ यू हैड दैट फीलिंग फॉर द किंग और द शपर्ड अब यहाँ पर हम इसको शपर्ड ही कहेंगे हम किंग का नाम नहीं लेंगे बिकॉज दैट्स ऑटोमेटिकली अंडरस्टूड द एलर्जीज फॉर द किंग तो लेट्स फोकस ऑन द शपर्ड है द शपर्ड फ्रेंड दैट ही हैड जिसके साथ वो अपनी बकरियाँ चराता था ठीक है सो इफ यू हैड दिस फीलिंग ऑफ पैशन इफ यू हैड दिस पैशन इफ यू हैड दिस लव इफ यू हैड दिस फीलिंग ऑफ फ्रेंडशिप फॉर द अदर फॉर द फ्रेंड फॉर द अदर शपर्ड देन ही वुड नॉट हैव हैड द टाइम टू यू नो थिंक ऑफ अलूजन एंड ही वुड नॉट हैव टाइम टू ऑबस्क्योर हिज वर्ड ही वुड हैव इन स्ट्रेट फॉरवर्ड वट ही वॉन्ट्स टू से इज दैट कि गम जो है असली गम अगर है आपको उसके मरने का उसके डूब जाने का तो आप इतनी अच्छी जबान इस्तेमाल नहीं करेंगे उस गम को बयान करने के लिए आपका गम बहुत स्ट्रेट फॉरवर्ड होना चाहिए इट शुड नॉट नीड ऑल दिस हार्ड वर्क ऑफ पुटिंग दीज थिंग्स टुगेदर इन द फॉर्म ऑफ अ वेरी वेरी ऑर्नेट लैंग्वेज पैशन प्लक्स नो बैरीज मार्टल एंड एवी नॉट कॉल्स अपाउन आर्थियज एंड मेनिकस नॉट चेल्स ऑफ रफ सैटर्स एंड फॉन्स द क्लोवन हील ये सारे के सारे वर्ड्स उसने इस लाइसडास में से लिए हैं कि उसने कहा है कि जब ही सेज ही इज़ वेरी सैड ही इज़ वेरी पैशनेट अबाउट द डेथ ऑफ द फ्रेंड 
he thinks that this should not have happened. This is, you know, a man plucked from the uh, a bush like berries have been. So he says that he has mentioned martel and ivy. These are two um, evergreen plants. Uh, purple color, purple color ki berries lagti hain martel pe. Okay. Arches and vinicus, they're two rivers. And not tells of rough satyrs and fawns of the cloven hills. If there was such true passion, if there was such true deep sadness in the person who's narrating the poem, if he was so, so dejected at the loss of a friend, he would not sit there and observe the place around him. He would not spend much time on telling about uh, how the berries looked on the bushes or how the little deer, they were moving around with their heels, you know, fawn color, ki, wo kya kehte hai, the cloven helian, ki jo, jis mein cleft aya hota hai. Uh, he would not talk about the river or the stream that's flowing by and what, is, what it is reminding him of. He would not talk of the deities. He would not invoke the name of the deities and ask them, Ki kyun bhai? why did this happen? So he says that all this ostentatious language, all this ornate language, all this flowery language, the scholarly use of allusions show that there is no passion. He has already told you that language is not like this. The diction that the writer has, poet has used, he does not agree with it. He does not agree with the rhyme scheme. He does not agree with the meter. He does not agree with the language. He does not believe that there is any beauty in it. Because if you have to find it and you have a microscope and you're looking for it very hard, the beauty can be found in the uh, sentiment or it can be found in the images that he has created. But in those images, he further criticized He said that so beautiful images created. He's sitting there mourning the loss of a friend. And if he's mourning the loss of the friend, if he has some true feelings for the friend, how the hell does he have the time to think of the berries and the gods and the streams and, and the beautiful deer moving around? If he's talking about the imagery, if he's sitting there talking about uh, the beautiful things all around him, if he's creating pictures with his pen, of course he does not have the passion. If you are truly sorry, you will start talking about your friend and you'll end up talking of your friend. You'll, have, you'll be a blubbering idiot. You'll be a mass of nerves and sadness and everything. But if you have time to think of beautiful words to describe what you're feeling, if you have time to um, figure out uh, dif different allusions, different references, if you have time to think of things that happened in the past, if you can make reference to the mythologies, if you can think of the name of the gods, if you can refer the stream to some other river in Sicily, then you are not feeling the passion. That should have been a part of your soul at this time when you have lost such a close friend. So this is... पहली चीज उसको उसकी लैंग्वेज को उसने क्रिटिसाइज कर दिया दूसरी चीज उसकी ब्यूटी की भी उसने क्वेश्चन किया कि ही डज नॉट बिलीव दैट द लैंग्वेज हैज एनी ब्यूटी और द पोएम हैज एनी ब्यूटी एंड द थर्ड थिंग दैट ही हैज क्रिटिसाइज्ड इज दैट देयर इज नो पैशन हियर द राइटर हैज नो पैशन व्हाटसोएवर वेयर देयर इज लजर फॉर फिक्शन देयर इज लिटिल ग्रीफ सो दिस सेज एवरीथिंग ही सेज कि इफ यू हैव द लजर to fiction to create fiction fiction kya hoti hai fiction is not something real okay non-fiction writing hoti hai na jab aap um, when you're talking about like an autobiography autobiography is with thodi si um fictional ho sakti hai agar aap karna chahe in isme jhoot ka element ho thodi sa fancy element dala ho aapne ya fantasy dali ho to he says ki if you have time to create something fictional agar aapke paas itna faltu time tha ki aap baithe hain aur aapne ek scene create kiya hai jisme ek pasture hai jisme ek chashma beh raha hai jisme hiran phir rahe hain aur khoobsurat jhadiyan hain phool hain aur ek spirit aake aapse baatein kar raha hai uske andar so of course you have too much time and your, your time is not consumed up by the grief that you feel for the friend that you claim that you do. So he is also criticizing the passion as well. He says if there is so much leisure, if you are so much leisure, if your mind is so much leisure, if your emotions are so much leisure, that you are fiction create. You are trying to think up words and references and similes and metaphors. You have too much time on your hand. So it's not, it's not the grief that you're feeling. It's something else. It's not the passion. It's not the true love for the friend that you're trying to mourn here. And because it's not true, so that is why we do not feel it as such. Because, you know, real art, if there is truth behind the art, it goes straight to the heart. So he says, Ke if they had there been a passion, it would have, you know, appealed to me. So it is not appealing to me. It means that it lacks the passion. Or us lack of passion ki proofs aapko diye hain ki he has written a little too much into the 
uh, he has written too much about the scenery. He has written little too much about the things going around around him. Too much scene painting zara zada ho hai. Background ko zada describe kar hai. Or describe karne ke liye bahut moti moti loves istamal kar hai. Bahut moti moti istaare la raha hai. Bahut moti moti similes la raha hai. Bahut moti moti metaphors la raha hai. Acha. He says that there is no nature in it. Nature, it's not truth. It's not true. It's not what is natural. Uh, why is it unnatural? Now he says that um, he misses him because they used to, you know, uh, move in the same pasture. They were such close friends. Uh, he says that we can't believe it because, you know, King Edward and um, uh, Milton, they don't really knew each other. I mean, he was not a close courtier to him. Of course, they studied in the same college once upon a time when King Edward was his senior and Milton was his junior. So, jitna ke senior or junior ka koi aapas mein taluk ho sakta hai, bas utna hi hoga. They can't be such close buddies. So, when he says all these things, it seems fake. It does not seem very natural. So, there's no truth in it. And as there's no truth in it, there's no art as well. Uh, so, we have discussed Aristotle. And we know that what Aristotle thinks art is, when we know what Plato thinks an art is. So here Samuel Johnson gives you a different aspect. He says, okay, if it's not true, if it's not natural, it's not art. It's not coming from the heart, that's what he wants to say. Uh, it's, it seems, you know, ostentatious, it, she, it seems pretentious for that matter. And because you do not have that feeling originally, you're just trying to show that you have that feeling. That is why it's not natural, that's why it's not truth it's that's why it's not an art so for him unlike the other two people we have already read and studied he is the one who believes that art comes from passion it comes from truth it comes from nature if these things are missing in a form of art in a piece of art in any piece of literature then it won't be true art and he says there's nothing new in it why should i like it there's nothing new in it. Allergies have been written so many times. Even just the image draw kya hai of this shepherd and a friend shepherd tending to the uh, goat or, uh, to, to a herd of goats or sheep for that matter. Uh, it's not new. What's so new about it? It's it's such a fa it's such a commonplace image, uh, creating this pasture, beautiful place, and two friends um, tending to their um, cattle. So I don't see anything new in it. So many people have written about it. Why should we consider him to be such a great poet when he has written about such such common mundane thing such un it's, it's, the idea is not novel it's not novel it's not um, it, it isn't something it doesn't ring a bell with you and he's given you several reasons so far that the truth is not in it there is no art there is no nature there is nothing new in it and that's why I don't like it he says it's unimaginative. Why is it unimaginative? Because he has, it does not seem that he has worked very hard for it. A true artist would imagine something new, would try to create a new situation. He has just borrowed from whatever has been written before him. There is nothing new. This is a very common place that he has written. He has done unoriginal work. He has done unimaginative work. This is very commonly written that there are two shepherds, two shepherds, two shepherds. They, they, they're moving in a pasture or unme se ek mar jata hai to dusra jo hai uski yaad mein baith ke aansu baha raha hai aur he's talking to gods and goddesses kyunki ye bhi badi purani baat hai it's, it's commonly done in literature that you have these deities coming down to talk to you spirits aate hain muses aati hain um, angels aate hain aur ye bada sab kuch common ho gaya it's an allergy and it's over um, uh, he thinks that it's overrated far much overrated than it deserves acha he thinks that images are long and exhausted. Ab wo agar baat karna shuru karte hai berries ki to itni moti moti illusions uske andar dal deta hai. If he start talking about the spirit, wo spirit ko itna lamba describe kar deta hai. If he's talking about the friend, the shepherd who died, who drowned, to uske liye wo baat lamba se image create karta hai. He thinks that it's too long. Things have to be a little precise. They have to be a little concise. They have to be a little compact for them to have a maximum impact. So he believes that he is a little, he's, he's dragging things. He's, you know, pulling them, uh, stretching them into something that they are not. So when, they, when he, the stretching is done so much that it becomes exhaustive to read them. So, so far he has said that 
Milton, as far as Lysander is concerned, he says that it's, it's not a good poem. Why? Because it's unimaginative, it's unoriginal, it's nothing new. He's already borrowed from whatever has been written before it. There's no nature in it, there's no truth in it, there's no art in it. Um, it's unimaginative and the images are long and they're extremely exhausting. He says there's no beauty in it except for the sentiments or the images. He believes that the language that he has used is um, it, it's hard, it's, it's, it's not very, you know, uh, flexible kind of language which, which would reach your heart. He says that the diction is uh, tough. He says that the rhyme scheme and the meter are inconsistent. So, there's, so far there's nothing good that he has pointed out. If anything good at all, it's the, it's the beauty that is found in the sentiments or that is found in the images that the writer has created. Like in Usko Bivo Foreign, he discredit Kardate. When he says that he does not believe that those sentiments to be true. If they're true, they're of a mild nature. They, they're not passionate enough. Because had they been passionate enough, so much time has not been spent on whatever the writer had to say about, you know, the king or the, the shepherd for that matter. Because we said we're not going to mention the king here. So whatever he has to say, uske liye wo itni moti moti language itni moti moti loves istemal kar rahe it means ke usko itna koi khas dukh nahi hai if he has time for friction then there is no time for grief that's what he says and it sums up what he wants to say acha he says that inherent improbability hai isme theek hai and he is not a big fan of improbability uh, as total was, he said that things can be improbable and good at the same time. He believes that the improbability should be convincing. If the improbability is convincing, it's better than unconvincing possibility or probability. So he says that there's an inherent improbability. It's hardly the chance that this would happen. Uh, I mean, why would you? I mean, you can't expect a shepherd who has to tend to his life. If he wouldn't sit there and mourn his friend so long, and there won't be deities coming down to talk to him and trying to explain to why did they, why they did what they did. Achha. So there's a dissatisfaction of mind hai, um, caused by all these things, which would, I mean, uh, the purpose of reading poetry would be to, you know, bring solace to your soul. It should calm you. It should, you know, keep you in peace. But this is not what this poetry is doing. It's, it's making you exhausted. It's, it's tiring you out of the long speeches and because of the difficult language and because of the uh, big uh, far-fetched words and allusions and references. So this is an allegory. I've already told you that ke, um, Milton has written it as an allegory. So there is an image, parallel draw. Kiya usne, it's a poor allegory, according to Samuel Johnson. We know that they never drove a field. There were no flocks. So he's just making fun of Milton here. Ke, aap kabhi King Edward ke saath, uh, ek field mein nahi rahe. There was no field. And there were no flocks. Theke? They studied in the same college, but they were so far apart from each other that they could not have any affinity. ये तो वही बात होगी कि आपने जैसे लोगों को आदत होती है कि आप बैठे हों कह रहे कि हाँ अच्छा जब जैसे मोइन कुरैशी वजीर आजम बना है तो आपने कहा हाँ वो मेरी खाला के बेटे का की बीवी का कजन है ठीक है यानी कि आप काम का रिश्तेदारियाँ जोड़ रहे हैं एक बंदा इम्पोर्टेंट हो जाए अगर तो आप काम की रिश्तेदारियाँ जोड़ना शुरू कर दें तो दिस इज दिस इज वॉट मिल्टन वट सैमुअल जॉनसन सिंह मिल्टन इज डूइंग है दैट इट्स अ पुअर एलेग्री देर वॉज नो फील दे डिड नॉट यूज टू आई मीन दे हैड नथिंग इन कॉमन दे हैड नो फ्रेंडशिप नन वॉट्स एवर वाई वुड दे ड्राइव शीप इन इन अ पास वाई वुड दे डू दैट दे हैव नथिंग इन कॉमन देव नेवर डन सच अ थिंग वे वुड यू थिंक दैट दे वर क्लोजली इफिनिएटेड विद each other closely related with each other there were no flocks there were no shepherd and there were no flocks they were not taking care of things together basically the shepherd or um, flock wali story to very common hai na christianity mein to especially ke jo bhi pastor hoga ya jo bhi uh, a clergy ka member hoga he is the he is the shepherd aur jo uski congregation hai wo uska flock hai jaise christ is the shepherd and the rest of the humanity is his flock theek hai इसी एलेग्री को इसने कहा है सैमुअल जॉनसन ने कि बड़ी पोर एलेग्री है यू यू कुड हैव थॉट बेटर यू कुड हैव डन बेटर बट ही थिंक्स दैट इट्स अ पोर एलेग्री व्हाई बिकॉज इस केस में तो स्पेशली जब मिल्टन और किंग एडवर्ड के दरमियान कोई इस तरह का रिश्ता था ही नहीं जबकि उनके कोई इस तरह की दोस्ती नहीं थी तो ही शुड नॉट हैव सेट सच थिंग्स द ट्रू मीनिंग इज सो अनसर्टन एंड रिमोट अगर मुझे ना पता हो कि ये पोएम इसलिए लिखी गई थी कि ये किंग एडवर्ड की एलर्जी है तो मुझे तो ये कभी समझ नहीं आएगी आपको भी कभी समझ नहीं आएगी एनी वन हु नीड्स टू अंडरस्टैंड दिस पॉइंट हैज टू हैव दिस बैकग्राउंड अवेलेबल टू हिम 
so a good poetry should be universal okay it should be something that uh, can be read at any period of time in any part of the world and it should be understood by the people who read it so if you can't understand it when you're reading it it means that uh, there is something lacking in it so that is what he's trying to point samuel johnson is trying to point here is that ki milton ki sabse badi strategic mistake ye hai ki there is no meaning in it it's it's so uncertain and it's so remote that you have to think very hard and you have to yani ki ye hai ki is kone se us kone tak khinch ke la ke cheezon ko aapse milana pad raha hai so it's not very it's not a good allegory it's it's not a good comparison among the flocks and copses and flowers appeared the heathen deities with a long train of mythological imagery और जो उसके अंदर इससे ज़्यादा बोर बात है वो ये है कि बहुत सारे गॉड्स एंड गॉडेसेस आ जाएंगे बहुत सारे रेफरेंसेस आएंगे बहुत सारे स्पिरिट्स आ जाएंगे टू मेनी नेम यू नो नेम थ्रोइंग कि आप 40-50 नाम ले लें जस्ट टू शो ऑफ के आपको ये ये पता है आप इन इन चीज़ों के बारे में जानते हैं आप इन इन लोगों को जानते हैं आप पाँच छः फिलासफर्स के नाम ले दें क्यों लें ताकि लोगों को पता चले कि आपको पता है सो ही थिंक्स ऑल दिस इज अननेसेसरी वट एवर ही हैज डन सो फार he believes that it's all is unnecessary it, this was not needed the diction chalo buri thi ignore kar diya language uh, rhyme scheme meter uncertainty we ignored it as well so the beauty was only in the sentiments and the imagery all right so when the sentiments were discussed they lacked passion why they lacked passion because you had so much time to talk about uh, you know illusions and you have to, so much time uh, to spend on language it means and you have so much time to spend on creating a fictitious character it means that you do not have the passion which you claim that you have then you move on and you say ke ji acha chalo theek hai passion nahi thi so what about so he what about the the, the image that he has trying to create hai usko bhi samuel johnson ne criticize kar diya usne kaha ki ye to unoriginal hai this is something that has been done so many times what's so good about it it's unoriginal it has no nature in it it has no truth in it it has that's why it's no art it's something that is already borrowed it's something that's unimaginable there's nothing new in it why would anyone write about something that has been done so many times uske baad usne kaha ki ye allegory bhi koi itni achhi quality ki allegory nahi hai because there is nothing common between the king and the poet he says ki the true meaning is so remote and so far fetched that you have to think very hard to put the pieces together he says that इतनी सारी पहले वो इतनी सारी इमेजरी क्रिएट कर रहे हैं ठीक है जिसमें वो फ्लॉक्स का बता रहा है कि इस तरह की भेड़ें थी ये था वो था फिर वो फ्लावर्स को एक्सप्लेन कर रहे हैं फिर वो जितने वहाँ पे दरख्तों के झुंड हैं उनको एक्सप्लेन कर रहे हैं और उसके बाद फिर इतनी सारी इमेजरी के अंदर फिर और इमेजरी स्टार्ट हो जाती है एंड द इमेजरी इज दैट ऑफ द गॉड्स एंड द गॉडस इज द स्पेरिट्स हु कीप ऑन कम टॉकिंग टू द पोएट ठीक है सो ही सेज कि ज्यादा फोकस तो इन चीज़ों पर है जो पैशन होनी चाहिए थी ये जो असल पॉइंट था पोएम का इट्स कम्प्लीटली मिसिंग nothing less displays knowledge or less exercise invention than to tell how a shepherd has lost his companion and must now feed his flock alone and how one god asks another what has become of lycidas and how neither god can tell he who thus grieves will excite no sympathy he who thus prays will confer no honor this these are the words of samuel johnson so he says ki वट एवर ही हैज़ रिटन शोज वेरी लिटल नॉलेज एंड इट हैज़ बीन वेरी वेरी लिटल इन्वेंशन ऑन पार्ट ऑफ द पोइट वाई डज ही से दैट ही सेज के इफ देर इज अ शेपर्ड सिटिंग देयर मोर्निंग द लॉस ऑफ हिज फ्रेंड एंड सेंग दैट बिकॉज ही वॉज सच अ गुड फ्रेंड एंड यूज टू टेन द शीप विद हिम नाउ ही वुड हैव टू टेक केयर ऑफ द शीप ऑल बाय माई सेल्फ ऑल बाई हिम सेल्फ ही वुड हैव टू फीड दैम ही वुड हैव टू टेक केयर ऑफ दैम ही वुड हैव टू सेव दैम फ्राम द वर्ल्ड एंड एवरी थिंग वट सो इनोवेटिव इन इट एंड वट सो नॉलेजेबल अबाउट इट द पोइट हैज शोन नन यू नो मिल्टन को इतना बड़ा क्लासिस्ट कहा जाता है कि ही इज़ वन ऑफ द ग्रेटेस्ट फॉलोअर्स ऑफ क्लासिक्स एंड ही हैज सो नॉलेजेबल ही हैज रेड सो मेनी क्लासिक्स सो वट एवर ही इज रिटन इन लाइसिडास नथिंग दैट ही इज रिटन इन लाइसिडास हैज यू नो एग्जिबिट्स वट एवर नॉलेज ही हैड सो द फर्स्ट थिंग ही सेज इज दैट कि इतना नॉलेज अगर था और इतना इनोवेटिव पोइट था ही इज कंसिडर्ड अ मास्टर नथिंग इज शोन है दर इज नथिंग न्यू अबाउट इट दर इज नथिंग यू नो नॉलेजेबल अबाउट ऑफ कोर्स दिस इज़ अ कॉमन कंक्लूजन ये तो मैं भी लिख सकता हूँ ये तो आप भी लिख सकते हैं कि भाई एक एक शपड है उसका जो साथी था वो मर गया है उसका असिस्टेंट था या साथी था जो भी था वो मर गया ठीक है वो मर गया तो जाहिर है उसको अकेले काम करना पड़ेगा एंड ऑफ कोर्स इज गोइंग टू बी लिटल सैड अबाउट इट सो वट सो ग्रेट अबाउट इट सो दिस इज वन थिंग दैट ही क्वेश्चन नेक्स्ट थिंग ही सेज
that how one God asks another, what has become of life? It is, I mean, for God's sake, you're gods. So if you're gods, you should know what has become of life. It is. If you do not know what has become of life, it is. What kind of gods are you? So both, there are many gods who would come and talk to the shepherd, and they would all ask among because shepherd unse puchega ki kyun kya unhone is tarah why did they drown uh, life? It is. And these gods they keep on asking each other what happened to life? It is. And none of the gods would know the answer. So this seems a little, you know, improbable as well, and this seems a little confusing as well, and this does not speak very good of um, Milton at this point of time. He who thus grieves will excite no sympathy. If you are going to grieve in this manner, if you are going to write of your loss in this manner, I am sorry, you are not going to have any sympathies at all. You are not going to excite any sympathies at all. He is making fun of Milton here, okay? but in a very serious tone. He is not trying to ridicule him. He is just being, you know, honest about his opinion. He says that if you have to mourn this way, if you have to write about your loss, then I am sorry. You are not going to get any sympathies out of anyone. People are not going to be very sympathetic about what you have written. People are not going to sympathize with you over the loss of your friends. Sorry, we do not feel that. Because this is not something new, this is not something imaginative that you've written. This is not something beautiful. This is no something not truthful. This isn't something um, artistic. This isn't something knowledgeable. There's nothing in it, and because there's nothing in it, I'm sorry. We do not feel the sympathy. It lacks passion. He who thus praises will confer no honor. अच्छा यहाँ पे जरा अच्छी चोट कर दी उसने. उसने कहा है कि if you're going to praise the king. Who's dead now? If you're going to praise him by writing this elegy and you're trying to get anything out of this elegy, if you're trying to get any favor and if you're trying to confer some honor on yourself, I'm sorry, you're not going to get that because this is no honor that you have bestowed on the king. This was not good enough. This is not the kind of thing that you've written would end up in you getting some kind of you know honor or some kind of uh, favor from the king or his predecessors. So overall, Milton ki achhi khasi usne criticize karke uski poem karakte. Like it is one of the very famous poems written by Milton. But when we end up with what Samuel Johnson has written about him, we find out ke is poem ki diction weak thi. बहुत स्ट्रॉन्ग लैंग्वेज यूज की गई थी जो कि पोएम के सब्जेक्ट मैटर को को इनहेंस नहीं करती। We find out that the rhyme scheme and the meter they're inconsistent. We find out that this there isn't any real beauty in the poem. All the beauty that is there is what do you call it? It's it's because of the scenery or the sentiments. फिर उसने सेंटिमेंट्स को भी क्वेश्चन कर लिया। उसने नेक्स्ट ही स्टेटमेंट उसकी ये है कि हैड दे बीन एनी रियल सेंटिमेंट्स, हैड दे बीन एनी पैशनेट फीलिंग फॉर द पर्सन हु हैज डाइड, सो यू वुड नॉट हैव स्पेंड सो मच टाइम राइटिंग इन सच फ्लावरली स्कॉलरी लैंग्वेज अबाउट दैट पर्सन हु emotions are so uh, sparse, uh, so, so, so free to think of other, th other things. So the, all the deities that you've conjured up, all the allusions that you've conjured up, all the references that you've conjured up are only because you have so much time to create fiction. And where there is time to create fiction, there's hardly any grief. Okay? The next thing which he criticizes is that Milton कोई खास कमाल नहीं किया यहाँ पे। He has written something that is unoriginal. He has already borrowed this idea from someone else because these elegies have been written so many times. The idea of this this pasture and the shepherd losing his friend it's not new. It's unoriginal. He says there's no nature in it, and he says there's no truth in it, and he also says that there's no art in it as well. So it's unimaginative. It's nothing new. It's artificial. And as a result of all this, it's not very much appealing to the senses as well. So he says that whatever he has written is so long, it's so exhausting. All the imagery that he has created is a little too much, and because it's too much, uh, you do not feel like reading it. It tires you out. It does not create the effect that it should have created. It does not bring solace to your soul. It does not enhance your feeling of calmness. Instead of doing this, he just tires you out with this long speeches that the shepherd makes or the deities make, and the description of the scenery and all these things. So in the end, he says that there is nothing 
so extraordinary about the poem what it does is that it shows that there's a little knowledge and there's a little artistry involved in this poem and he also says that this poem shows um, that the writer had no real feelings for the uh, f for the, the poet had no real feelings for the for the person who had died he's just trying to get sympathies and he says that he's not going to get sympathies this way because it's not very well written and if he's trying to get any sort of honor by writing this elegy of the king he's not going to get that as well because it's not very well written it's not how it should have been written it's nothing original and it's nothing new then we move on to the he says that the very little uh, things that are mixed with the sacred truth because you know i've already told you ki jo shepherd wali allegory hai na ye basically christ ke liye use hoti hai to yahan pe usne wo king ke liye bhi use kiya ke he was the king he was the shepherd of our flocks because king jo hota hai wo um, aapka ruhani bhi wo hota hai peshwa england mein especially kyunki jo church of england ka head hota hai wo king hi hota hai to he says ki itni choti si baat ko usne itne bade sacred truth ke sath mila diya ye kabhi bhi nahi hona chahiye he say that uh, evolution is ne shepherd ki ki hai ki ecclesiastical pastor the shuru mein wo shepherd tha by the time the poem ends he is this pastor the the one who's driving the entire nation towards heaven so such equations are always unskillful and at least an approach to impiety of which the writer not have been conscious okay he has been trying to achieve something with the writer has not been conscious it's been done unconsciously he is he has done this evolution ki wo shuru mein ek shepherd tha aur end he he ended up being you know this big uh, spiritual leader so this thing he says that uh, he is trying to achieve this reverence the writer ne consciously nahi kiya lekin jis ye appeal to reverence which he has done is not Uh, done very much consciously the writer was not aware of what he was trying to do so ye ek aur criticism is pe aa gaya ki he has tried to mix trifling things small pity, pity things with uh, great truths great sacred truths so subject matter ko zyada sacred tha jo ki usko handle karna nahi aaya acha ye jo cheez hai na uh, milton has earned his repetition and the blaze of this repetition keep on away from closely examining the poetry यहाँ पे बेसिकली एग्जैक्टली सैमुअल जॉनसन ने कहा है जो मैंने आपको पहले बताया था कि होता क्या है कि यू ऑब्जर्व दीज पोइट्स एंड यू थिंक दैट दीज आर वेरी वेरी ग्रेट पोइट्स एंड बिकॉज ऑफ दीज रेपिटेशन दैट देव अर्न फॉर देम सेल्स इट क्रिएट्स अ सॉर्ट ऑफ वॉल अराउंड देम एंड बिकॉज यू नो दैट दिस इज सच अ ग्रेट पोइट इवन इफ यू थिंक समथिंग इज रॉन्ग विद द पोइम आप उसको क्वेश्चन नहीं करते सो दिस इज वट सैमुअल जॉनसन सेंग दैट ही हैज अर्न इज रेपिटेशन एंड बिकॉज ऑफ द रेपिटेशन इट कीप्स अवे कीप्स एस अवे फ्रॉम ऑब्जर्विंग हिज पोइट्री लिटिल क्लोजली सो वेन वी डू वी फाइंड सो मेनी फॉल्स है ठीक है यू वुड हैव थॉट कि आप मिल्टन की पोइट्री के अंदर से इतनी गलतियां निकाल सकते हैं सो ही से इसके जब हमने इस पोइट्री को क्लोजली ऑब्जर्व किया तो हमें पता चला कि इसके अंदर इतनी ज्यादा गलतियां हैं ये तो उसकी रेपिटेशन थी जो हमें रोके रखती थी जिस फाइन ट्यून एग्जामिनेशन करने से हैड नॉट वन नोन हु हैज रिटन दिस पोइम इट कैन नॉट बी अप्लाई जर हैड वी रेड दिस पोइम नॉट नोइंग हु हैज रिटन इट इट वुड नॉट हैव बीन प्लेजर और तब हमने इस पर सही जजमेंट पास करनी थी वो जजमेंट पास करनी थी जो अब सैम्यूल जॉनसन ने पास किया है सो इट्स बिकॉज ऑफ हिज नेम मिल्टन नेम दैट वी रिफ्रेन फ्रॉम पासिंग द ट्रू जजमेंट एंड सैम्यूल जॉनसन हैज नॉट स्टॉप हिमसेल्फ फ्रॉम सेंग दैट सो ही सेज वट एवर ही थिंग्स इज राइट अगली पोइम जो हमने पढ़नी है इसकी दैट इज एल गैरो एंड एल पेंसरोसो ठीक है two poems and these po two poems in ki bahut aarif hai ye samuel johnson has said these two poems they are read with pleasure so okay, the author's design is not to show how objects derive their color from mind but rather how arming the successive variety of appearance every disposition of mind takes hold on those by which it may be gratified acha iska matlab ye hai is statement ka कि ये दोनों पोइम्स एक तो उसने पहली पहली बात ही कि उसने शुरू से तारीफ की इन दोनों पोइम्स की दिस अ गुड दिस अ गुड रीडिंग प्लेजरेबल रीडिंग एंड ही सेज दिस टू पोइम्स डिपिक्ट टू डिफरेंट स्टेट्स ऑफ माइंड एंड ही सेंग कि हाउ द इवेंट्स दैट हैपन अराउंड अस हाउ द वर्ल्ड दैट इज मूविंग अराउंड अस हाउ द थिंग्स दैट मूव अराउंड अस दे टेक द फॉर्म ऑफ वट एवर इज हैपनिंग इन आर माइंड जो हमारे दिमाग की स्टेट होती है इट मेक्स द सराउंडिंग अराउंड अस लाइक इट If you're happy, everything around you would look to be cheerful. It would appear to be cheerful. If you're sad, everything would appear to be gloomy. It's the state of mind. Okay? He says, 
the successive right of a parent's every disposition of mind takes hold on these by which it may be gratified it means ki jo aapke dimag ki halat hoti hai jo aapke dimag ki soch hoti hai jo state of mind hoti hai it is reflected on everything around you so el uh, 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 allegro or el processo uh, el penseroso jo hai this is about two people one is a cheerful person the other is a uh, pensive person cheerful person is the one who you know stays happy go lucky type ka person theek and a pensive man is the one who thinks who's not you know a very cheerful person who who does not smile much and who has a lot to think about acha difference between cheerful and pensive man that comes here acha the cheerful man hears lark in the morning and the pensive man hears the nightingale in the evening acha jo cheerful aadmi hoga na usko hamesha subah murghe ki awaaz अच्छी लगेगी उसको चिड़ियों का चहचहाना सुबह के वक्त अच्छा लगेगा लाल होता है परिंदा इंग्लैंड में होता है इट इट्स मेक्स इट नेस्ट इन द बुशेज ठीक है झाड़ियों के अंदर उसका नेस्ट होता है जब सुबह होती है तो इट स्टार्ट्स मूविंग वो इस तरह से चक्कर काटता हुआ आसमान की तरफ जाता है बाय द टाइम इट गोज आप साथ साथ एक आवाज निकालता जाता है ये एक उसका साइन होता है कि सुबह होगी फिर उसके बाद वो नीचे आ जाता है इस तरह लाक ऑलवेज स्पिंस अप इन टू द स्काई सो अ चेयरफुल मैन वुड लिसन टू दिसन फॉर द लाक ही वुड बी हैप्पी a sad man would listen for the nightingale in the evening theek hai wo sham ke waqt jo koil kookegi wo uski awaaz sunega usko wo attract karegi ab tabiyaton ka farak hai basically how a cheerful man observes a day of labor acha jo cheerful aadmi hoga na wo subah uthega murghe ki awaaz sunke uthega he would be he would be happy he would observe things happening around him he would observe the sky he'll be happy about it he'll observe whatever the uh, laborer they doing in the uh, in the in the land theek hai whether they with the sowing the crops or they harvesting the crop he would be happy about it he would see the, uh, listen to the song singing uh, sung by a milkmaid he would be very happy about it but a cheerful man would look at everything in a cheerful way he would be pleased by everything he would try to find happiness in everything that he uh, comes across it can be a blade of grass it could be a flower it could be the smell of a flower it could be a bird chirping in the nest it could be a milkmaid singing milking the cows it could be the plowman plowing the field anything at all but 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 uh, but a uh, pensive man how would he see the day he would walk into the uh, into the night he would walk lonely theek hai cheerful aadmi hoga to subah subah sunrise dekhne jayega khushi khushi jayega shor machata ho jayega he would not like to be lonely but a pensive man he would like to be lonely he would sit um outside near a stream under a tree reading a book he would look up think about things that have gone by he would think about lives that have gone by he would think about the previous um uh times he would uh, you know walk lonely into the woods he would uh, enjoy the night uh, night time wanderings he would look at the stars he would sit if the if the weather is cold and if it's raining outside he would sit inside his room uh, and he would not let a very cheerful fire he would have these embers only koile angare jal rahe honge he would sit by the fire and he would look into it he would look at the stars and think of the souls that have already departed you know resting in these stars so he would have this he would he would go and watch the sunset but he would make it a lonely experience he would not like to have you know share people uh, share this experience with other people so there is a difference between the two people they would take life differently they would look at life differently both mirth and melancholy a solitary silent inhabitants of the breast of the neither that receive nor transmit communication no mention is there for made a philosophical friend or pleasant companion theek okay? hai if a person is cheerful he does not need anyone it's inside you it's in your heart so you have to be cheerful you'll be cheerful by yourself that is why the poet has not mentioned anyone uh, no philosophical friend in the case of a, a pensive man and there's no uh, pleasant companion in the case of a cheerful person akele hain it's in the breast it means it's in the heart aapke seene mein hai aapke andar hai aapke soul mein hai pensiveness and cheerfulness it's inside you you do not need outside factors for this to happen there is going to be no calamity striking you there's not going to be a tragedy striking you to make you 
पेंसिव एंड इज नॉट गोइंग टू बी एनी ड्रिंकिंग हैबिट दैट इज गोइंग टू मेक यू चेयरफुल यानी कि आपने चार पांच बेयर पिए लिए हैं तो इसका मतलब ये नहीं कि दैट्स गोइंग टू मेक यू हैप्पी एंड यू यू डू नॉट नीड टू सफर ग्रेट इन लाइफ टू बी पेंसिव यू कैन बी वेरी हैप्पी बोथ फाइनेंशियली एंड सोशली यू कुड बी वेरी वेल सेटल बट इवन देन यू कैन बी पेंसिव एंड यू कैन बी एक्सट्रीमली इन एक्सट्रीम फिक्स एंड इवन देन यू कैन बी cheerful so it's inside the heart you cannot inside the heart you can't transmit it you can't tell people why you are happy and you cannot tell people why you are unhappy or unhappy to nahi aap usko keh sakte usko pensive keh sakte hain sirf theek hai so this is the difference between the cheerful man and the pensive man el allegro and el pensoraso mein theek hai usne bataya hai ki jo cheerful banda hoga na he can be happy in any condition and jo pensive banda hoga he can be um, uh, he can be pensive in any condition they do not need an outside factor for them to behave in a certain way unki mirth mein bhi melancholy hai aur melancholy mein mirth nahi hai cheerful man the pensive man when they visit city ye to apne country ki baat ki thi na jo jisko kehte hain rural areas ki baat ki thi jahan pe ab nature se zyada kareeb hai agar wo country se nikal ke cities mein bhi chale jayenge to the cheerfulness and the pensiveness they won't be affected by it jab main aapko bataya hai ki pensiveness ya cheerfulness kisi bande ki wajah se nahi aa rahi unke andar it's not because of the because of things that they have had or because of the things that they have said it's not because of the things around them it has no outside factor so this, this would continue when they would move around and they would move from nature to the city so the cheerful man would walk the streets and attend the assemblies he will attend the theater to cheerful banda hoga na wo khush khush har jagah pe jayega bazaron mein jayega logon se milega because he is in the city so he would go to the market place the business place he would attend the theaters he would go out for hoteling he would go and eat out with friends and he would like to sit in a park observe people hasal basal hogi jahan pe theek hai and he would like that अब जो पैंसिव बंदा होगा वो क्या करेगा द पैंसिव मैन नेवर लूजेज हिम सेल्फ इन क्राउड बट वॉक्स द क्लॉइस्टर्स और फ्रीकुंस द कैथ्रल ठीक है ही इज गोइंग टू गो टू सी द मंग्स ही वुड सी वेयर दे लिव ही वुड सी ऑब्जर्व द चर्चेज ही वुड ही वुड वो शहर में भी ऐसी जगह ढूंढ लेगा जहाँ वो अकेला रह सकता है शहर जहाँ पे इतना रश है जहाँ पे इतने लोग हैं जहाँ पे लोग सारा दिन सुबह से शाम तक जिंदगी चलती रह रही है अ पैंसिव मैन वुड फाइंड अ प्लेस वेयर ही कुड बी लोन वेयर ही कुड सेट calmly and think uska ye nahi hai ki he has some sort of you know comedy in his life or some sort of tragedy in his life he just likes to be quiet he just likes to think about things he cannot be happy for the sake of being happy both his character delight in music melancholy ke liye bhi music character ke liye bhi music bahut zyada acha hai usko bahut zyada pasand hai aur jo cheerful character hai uske usko bhi music bahut zyada pasand hai theek hai लेकिन मिल्टन क्या करता है कि टूवर्ड्स द एंड ऑफ द स्टोरी ही ही सेज के ओल्ड एज जो है उसमें चेयरफुलनेस को इतनी ज्यादा सूट नहीं करती लेकिन जो मेलंकली कैरेक्टर है जो पेंसिव कैरेक्टर है इट होल्ड्स अ ग्रेट रिस्पेक्ट बिकॉज ऑफ द मेलंकली नेचर ऑफ इज प्रेजेंस ठीक है ही ही बिलीव के जो इसने जो कैरेक्टर्स दो क्रिएट किए हैं ना इसमें जो इसका मेलंकली कैरेक्टर है इट्स विदाउट एस्पेरिटी एस्पेरिटी का मतलब है उसको खाम का अनरीजनेबल गुस्सा नहीं आ रहा ही इज नॉट गोइंग टू बी बेटर ही इज नॉट गोइंग टू टेक हिज एंगर आउट ऑन अदर पीपल ही इज गोइंग टू बी वेरी काम एंड ही इज गोइंग टू बी वेरी क्वायट बट ही इज गोइंग टू बी पैंसे वो खाम का हंसेगा नहीं लेकिन वो लोगों पर गुस्सा भी सड़ा हुआ नहीं होगा दैट्स दैट्स वट ही वॉन्टेड टू से और जो चेयरफुल होगा ना वो लेविटी उसमें नहीं होगी लेविटी का मतलब यह है कि ही इज नॉट गोइंग टू बी यू नो सीरियस सिचुएशन में भी ही 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 करा जा रहा है यू नो पीपल हु टेक थिंग्स वेरी नॉन सीरियसली इवन इफ द सिचुएशन एक्सट्रीमली सीरियस इज समन डाइंग और समथिंग द चेयरफुलनेस ही हैज वुड बी वेल कंटेंट इट वुड बी प्रॉपर इट वुड नॉट बी समथिंग दैट वुड दैट वुड बी कंसिडर्ड इन प्रॉपर इन इन अ सीरियस सिचुएशन through these poems images are properly selected mostly distinguished diction seems not sufficiently discriminated no mirth can indeed be found in his melancholy however there is melancholy in his worth there are two noble efforts of an imagination acha isme kya hai ki jo language usne use kiya hai na it's not suitable when he's talking about melancholy person phir wohi tone of language hai aur jab wo baat kare cheerful bande ke bare mein to bhi tone of language wohi hai so they should have been according to samuel johnson they should have been a difference in the diction use theek hai ki cheerful uh, ki language cheerful bande ke bare mein jab wo baat kare they should have been difference in language as here as well and he this second criticism he has made here is that that the, there is no mirth in the melancholy person theek hai उसको आप हंसता हुआ नहीं देखेंगे खुशी नहीं देखेंगे लेकिन जो मेलंकली जो हैप्पी पर्सन है चेयरफुल पर्सन इज गोइंग टू बी सम मेलंकली इन हिस्मत उसकी खुशी में थोड़ा सा गम जरूर आप देखेंगे 
So he thinks that this is, these are the two very, very notable um, efforts of imagination. Third poem we have to is that's Mask of Commerce. Okay? This can be seen as his most juvenile performance. Extremely, it's looked down upon, extremely criticized. Um, is ke andar ab dekh sakte hain ke he is moving towards paradise last because isme too much moralizing hai isme um, religious element bahut zyada dala hua hai uh, isme bahut zyada religious element to aap isko nahi keh sakte because there's no talking of christ or something like that but lekin usme bahut zyada preaching bahut zyada hai iske andar to sermons bahut zyada hain so he believes ke you can see that paradise lost is coming Achha, the poem shows that milton has earlier devised a system of diction and mode of verse which his maturer judgment approved and from which he never deviated. This poem se pata chal jata hai ki he has already devised a system and he's continuing with it. And he likes it. He has tried to judge it uh, himself, Milton, and he has decided ki no, I'm doing good, I should stick with this. And he continues to do so. It is also an exhibit of his power of diction, his vigor of sentiment, which he has used in order to praise and defend virtue okay Achha. Ab he has good command of language he he uses good words and he has used all his words and he's used all the language knowledge that he has in order to praise and in order to defend virtue to usko purpose se koi itna khas um, impress nahi ho hota kehta ki ye koi itni achhi baat is nahi ki ki he has used such great knowledge for this sake but this is what this poem shows us Achha. it's a poetical work truly poetical work rarely found as there are allusions images descriptive epithets adorn every period it deserves all the admiration he got as a drama it is deficient because the action is not probable a mask is understandable in case of supernatural but its action is merely human it ought to be reasonable is my kya issue hai ke agar isko aap sirf poetry ki tarah dekhein to poetry to bahut achhi hai theek hai isme sari political devices use hui hain bahut achhe tarike se use hui hain sahi jagah pe use hui hain so you like it har period mein har jo poem ka hissa hai uske andar bahut achhi language use hui hai properly use hui hai bahut flowery hai bahut scholarly hai bahut ornate poem hai it's good it deserves all the praise it gets but drama ka ek jo humne cheez already padhi thi because mask is a drama that is not a mask. So, there is a cheese that is not a cheese that is not a cheese that is not a It lacks probability. Theek hai, supernatural elements introduced. Kara di hai. Theek hai, wahan pe aapko, you understand. Theek hai, improbable cheese hai, you understand it, you, you adjust yourself to it. But when you human characters, then probability is a thodi si zyada honi chahiye aise action nahi un human characters ko karne chahiye jo ki improbable lage kyunki agar aap iski story dekhe to isme ye hai ki there are two brothers and they are moving in a jungle with their sister and they you know stop somewhere to rest and the two brothers they move away in search of berries and they move so far away that they forgot about their sister and the sister was left there alone to defend her uh, virtue uh, f uh, from you know different evil characters who come and phir isme spirits aa jayenge jo ke uske liye ladai karenge or they would, they would try to save the sister from the uh, brothers jo hai they, they have just went away they do not know what to do so this cannot be uh, this cannot be probable in this, in this case he ho nahi sakta ki do bhai hain wo apni behan ko ek jungle mein chhod ke chale jaye aur uske baad aaye na wapas aur behan jo hai wo bechari ke liye apne virtue ko defend karne ki koshish kar rahi hai so he believes ki theek hai story bahut achhi hai but the element of improbability is a little too high uh, which should not have been the case what deserves more uh, reprehensive is that the prologue spoken in the wild wood by the attendant spirit is addressed to the audience a mode of communication unprecedented so is ki shuru mein jo prologue hai maine aapko bataya tha ki ek jo structure hota hai tragedy ka usme ek cheez prologue hoti hai jo chorus hota hai na wo wo prologue bolta hai theek hai uh, wo ek the huge it would sing a song to is case mein jo prologue hua hai na wo uh, usne audience ko address kiya and it, this is highly unheard of this has never happened in, uh, before in poetry so this is the first criticism that they had the discourse of spirit is too long usne bahut lambi speech kar di um, it appears to be declamations on moral questions appears to be a lecture और आपको लगता है जैसे आप ड्रामा देखने के लिए नहीं आए बल्कि आप कोई मोरालिटी पे कोई क्या कहते हैं उसको वर्च्यू पे कोई लेक्चर सुनने के लिए आए हुए हैं सो इट्स विदाउट पैशन एंड इट्स विदाउट एंजाइटी भाई 
आपने एक ड्रामा के लिए लोगों को एक्साइट करना है तो शुड भी समथिंग एक्साइटिंग इन इट एज वेल इट शुड अराउ सम काइंड ऑफ सस्पेशन इट शुड अराउ सम काइंड ऑफ फीलिंग इन द पीपल हु लिसनिंग टू द टू द स्पिरिट और लिसनिंग टू द प्रोलोग इन दिस केस लेकिन जो स्पिरिट की स्पीच है ना वो सिर्फ मोरलिटी पे प्रीचिंग है वर्चू का डिफेंस है उसका प्रेज है सो दिस इज नॉट वेरी मच अट्रैक्टिव फॉर द पीपल हु आर देयर टू वॉच द ड्रामा जो उसमें सॉन्ग्स आते हैं अच्छा दे दे आर गुड दे आर जॉली बट द इन्विटेशन टू प्लेजर आर सो जनरल दैट नो डिस्टिंग इमेज इज फॉर्म एंड इट डज नॉट इग्नाइट द फैंसी अब इसमें क्या है कि बिकॉज मिल्टन चूंकि प्योरिटन था एंड द प्योरिटन बो मोरलिस्ट सो कॉमर्स वॉज अ पर्सन हु अबडक्टेड द गर्ल ठीक है जो बहन जिसकी हम बात कर रहे थे जिसको भाई छोड़ के चले गए थे कॉमर्स वॉज द पर्सन हु जस्ट एबडक्टेड हर उस पर कब्जा कर लिया था उसको अगवा कर लिया था अपने कब्जे में ले लिया था एंड ही इज गोइंग टू टॉक यू नो नॉन सेंस ही इज गोइंग टू टॉक अबाउट थिंग्स अब वो उसको ईवल की तरफ दावत दे रहा है उसको टेम्प्ट कर रहा है अब जो उसकी टेम्पटेशन हैं जो उसकी जो ईवल की वो बातें कर रहे हैं दे नॉट वेरी यू नो ईवल इतनी जनरल इतनी वेग टर्म में मिल्टन ईवल की बात करेगा और इतनी ज्यादा जो फ्रिवॉलिटी की बात वो कर रहे हैं इवन इफ इज टॉकिंग ऑफ सेक्स इफ देर आर सेक्शुअल रेफरेंसेस दे गोइंग टू बी सो जनरल कि आप टेम्प्ट ही नहीं होंगे तो बेसिक पर्पज यहाँ पे वो फॉथ हो जाता है कि पोइट्री नहीं तो एक खास किस्म की फीलिंग आपके अंदर जगानी है तो इट्स नॉट इट्स नॉट डूइंग इट सो द रेफरेंसेज इज सो कॉशियस एंड दिस सो टाइट लिप्ट कि दे यू डू नॉट गेट वट द राइटर वॉन्ट्स यू डू गेट है ही इज अवॉइडिंग इज होल्डिंग हिम सेल्फ बैक है वाई बिकॉज ऑफ द मोरलिटी अच्छा दे सिलिकीज भी हैं कॉमर्स में बहुत बड़ी बड़ी सिलिकीज होती हैं बेसिकली स्पीचेस होती हैं जो कि बेसिकली क्योंकि आप ड्रामा में तो शो नहीं कर सकते कि राइटर जो है जो एक्टर है ये कैरेक्टर है वो क्या सोच रहा है ठीक है तो उसके लिए दे यूज टू मेक स्पीचेस यू नो स्टैंडिंग देयर और बाकी कैरेक्टर्स ऐसे प्रिटेंड करते थे कि उनको नहीं समझ आ रही कि वो क्या कह रहे हैं वो नहीं सुन रहे बाकी सारे कैरेक्टर स्टेल हो जाते थे तो सिलिकी बेसिकली वो होता था जो उनके दिमाग में उस वक्त जो स्ट्रीम ऑफ थाट चल रही होती थी तो इसमें जो सिलिकीज हैं द एलिकेंट बट दे tedious and can be only pleasant if the singer has a good voice that's the only good thing about them the person the actor or the singer jo ki stage pe khada ho sileli ki bol raha hai if he has a good voice that would be the only good thing about them the language or the material that the sileli ki has has nothing good to add to it acha when the brothers enter it is a sileli ki by the brothers as well theek hai jab wo apni behan ko dhoond rahe hain aur wo thode se pareshan hai and they enter on the stage and the, the spirit comes and they tell them ke ji they have seen their <coughs> this sister and the sister is um, you know with uh, commerce and everything they find out to jo bada wala bhai hai na he is going to have a soliloquy and what he is going to do he is going to you know say uh, talk about morality um, he is going to first consider the safety of his sister uh, they hope ke hope, uh, hopefully she is safe and the elder makes a speech in praise of chastity and the younger he says how good it is to philosophize how good it is to you know talk of these things how to talk of philosophy and talk of chastity and talk of virtue and talk of good and evil and everything like that so the soliloquies are not very effective acha phir ek spirit aa jayega spirit hai jo this extra being extra terrestrial being metaphysical being koi hai aur wo aayega ji wo unse baat karega he comes to the two brothers in the form of a shepherd and the uh, the brothers they going to praise his singing अब उनकी बहन घुमी हुई है एंड ही इज गोइंग टू दे नॉट कंसर्न अबाउट दैट एंड दे गोइंग टू प्रेज द सिंगिंग फर्स्ट उसकी उसकी चित्र तारीफें करेंगे एंड दे गोइंग टू इंक्वायर अबाउट द बिजनेस ऑन फाइंडिंग दट द लेडी अबाउट हिज बिजनेस पूछेंगे कि आप क्या कर रहे हैं यहाँ पे आप क्यों यहाँ फिर रहे हैं आप इतना अच्छा गाते क्यों हैं वगैरह वगैरह और फिर वो अपनी बहन का पूछेंगे और फिर वो बताएगा स्पिरिट उनको कि ही द सिस्टर्स इन द पावर ऑफ कॉमर्स एंड द ब्रदर्स ऑन नोइंग द सिस्टर इज इन द पावर ऑफ कॉमर्स दे गोइंग टू मॉरलाइज अगेन अगेन एक लंबी सी स्पीच होगी बहुत टीडियस होगी बहुत ज़्यादा फ्लावरी लैंग्वेज के साथ विच इज गोइंग टू हैव नो इफेक्ट ऑन पीपल अच्छा इसका स्टाइल जो है इसकी लैंग्वेज पोलिटिकल है इसके सेंटिमेंट्स जेनरस हैं बट दे समथिंग वॉन्टिंग दैट समथिंग वॉन्टिंग इज द औरिजनैलिटी इन इट द ट्रू फीलिंग द पैशन विच इज लैकिंग जो फिगर्स इसने बनाई हैं दे टू बोल्ड इसको कहते हैं बहुत ज़्यादा शार्प फिगर्स बनाई हुई हैं लैंग्वेज इज टू लग्जूरियन फॉर ड्रामा ड्रामा थोड़ा सा प्रिसाइज होता है थोड़ी सी लैंग्वेज उसकी टर्स होती है थोड़ी सी लैंग्वेज उसकी कॉम्पैक्ट होती है ये बहुत ज़्यादा फ्लावरी लैंग्वेज है बहुत ज़्यादा लंबी स्पीचेज हैं अच्छा ये ड्रामा जो एपिक स्टाइल में है एक लंबी सी स्टोरी चल रही है ड्रामा की यूनिटी इसमें इफेक्ट हो रही है अच्छा इट्स इन एलिगलेंटी स्पलेंडेड There is no elegance in it. There is no style in it. 
स्प्लेंडेड है ठीक है लेकिन वो स्प्लेंडेड उस तरह का है जैसे तेज रंग होते हैं ना उनको आप एलिगेंट तो नहीं कह सकते लेकिन वो स्प्लेंडेड जरूर होते हैं आपको शॉक जरूर करते हैं आपका इम्प्रेस जरूर करते हैं आपका अट्रैक्ट जरूर करते हैं तो इट्स स्प्लेंडेड इन दैट वे बट इट्स नॉट स्प्लेंडेड इन द वे ऑफ एलिगेंस ठीक है एंड इट्स टीजियसली इंस्ट्रक्टिव इस चीज पे से एमिल जॉनसन को बहुत ज्यादा एतराज है कि इसमें बहुत ज्यादा इंस्ट्रक्शन है बहुत ज्यादा प्रीचिंग है बहुत ज्यादा मोरलाइजिंग है इट इज बिकमिंग टीडियस इट बिकम्स टायरिंग फॉर अस टू कंटिन्यू विद इट सो दैट्स अबाउट ऑल वी आर गोइंग टू कंटिन्यू विद द रेस्ट ऑफ द पोएम्स रिटन बाय मिल्टन एंड डिस्कस्ड बाय सैम्यूल जॉनसन इन द नेक्स्ट लेक्चर थैंक यू